Oh, okay. I'll stand here. <laughs> Good evening, uh, I am Manish and I work for Autodesk. Uh, okay. Uh, I work for Autodesk and today we are going to talk about uh, how to optimize your S3 usage or how we can detect uh, there is anomaly in your S3 usage and how we can save uh, costs. So this is based on my experience with a previous startup. Even though I work for Autodesk, uh, I, I don't work uh, for AWS in, uh, at Autodesk. I mean, I don't use any of AWS services or auto disk. So, let's uh, begin the agenda. So, we ha we'll talk only three things here. We'll think uh, we'll talk what is S3 and what is the AWS billing pattern, and then we'll see why do we need to understand how what is the S3 data transfer cost? Why does it matters to us? And last is how do we have generate S3 analytics so that we can actually optimize the cost. So let's come to uh, what is S3. So those who haven't used S3 or those who don't know what S3 is, it's a, it stands for Simple Storage Service. So basically, you can actually uh, dump all your files into the S3 storage, and you can give uh, access to your uh, services to those files. So that said, uh, you know, next coming to AWS billing. AWS billing. Uh, actually generates monthly. So based on the usage, like you use uh, S3, EC2, and other things, based on that, uh, the AWS billing comes. So let me st show you how actually uh, AWS billing, billing is. Billing looks like. So generally, the AWS bill, billing looks like something like this. So it gives you a breakup of all the service, different services that you have used, and what's the costing for each of the services that you have consumed. And if you can see here, uh, uh, my data transfer cost for uh, this particular month is uh, around thirty-one dollars. It's for the month of uh, July two thousand seventeen. So this particular service is basically consumed by a startup in U.S. Uh, they are having an uh, e-learning platform, so where they have all the e-learning content over the AWS cloud, and what happens is uh, they were uh, deployed this for almost close to five years now, and they used to get an average monthly bill of around two hundred to two fifty dollars uh, within this uh, this uh, this uh, range. So what happened suddenly in the month of uh, August two thousand seventeen onwards, the bill shot up to six hundred, almost three three times. So if you can see uh, see the bill b b billing here. The data transfer sh shot up to three hundred and three seventy-seven dollars. It's almost uh, from close to thirty-one dollars. It almost shot to three seventy-seven. So that means it's almost like more than twenty times or thirty times. And uh, if you see the billing uh, breakup, you see that uh, there's a data transfer. This particular cost. So there's almost close to four uh, four terabytes of the data has been transferred. Usually the data transfer is for, was around 500 GB per month, but uh, what happened from August 2017 onwards is shot up to for four terabytes, and the bill shot up uh, exponentially. And we never, we don't know what was actually causing this. During the month of August, they deployed a few to two of the new features. One is they moved their existing platform from Flash-based e-learning tool to HTML5 based tool. So what happened? And uh, apart from that, they deploy, uh, added few more via help uh, videos into uh, the uh, platform. So they were not sure what was actually causing this uh, shoot up in the S3 usage. And if you see the bill, you uh, really can't figure out what's actually causing this. So that actually, uh, with that actually, we now move to the next uh, section. Called next uh, section. Why do we need to understand the S3 data transfer cost? So we need to understand like S3 has two uh, two kind different kinds of costing. One is the amount of storage space you use in S3 that actually costs you, and the amount of data transfer happens between your S3 and your client uh, whoever is uh, requesting the service. So that is also built. So the first part you know you can, uh, look okay you are using one one gigabyte of your S3 storage so you are built this much. 
but the second part there is no clear break up how much of data transfer or which file is getting downloaded and why is it ca causing uh, the spike in the uh, this thing so we really can't pinpoint okay this is the particular file which is being downloaded heavily by the users which is causing the spike in this uh, billing so now we need to see go to the uh, next final step how do we opt, uh, how do we try to figure out who is the culprit file which is actually causing this all this uh, 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 spike in the cost so if i come jump to the bill as i shown like there is no uh, there is no really detail even if you go to cost explorer or something you can't really figure out uh, what is actually causing this issue so let me actually show that uh, this is the uh, application uh, this is the e learning platform they have and they have this uh, they in the month of august they actually uh, have this once you log in you can actually see this getting started screen this is a very help, basic help uh, they were, they added some five videos to help you with the usage of the app and uh, then they moved the entire platform from flash based to html5 now uh, this is what uh, these are the two simple changes they did but they don't really don't know what was actually causing the issue so one of their developers they said it might be because we moved from flash to html5 flash might be ca caching the videos and html5 is not caching the videos so it might be uh, spiking up every time the user logs in he is actually seeing the videos uh, afresh from the server then what we did was uh, they contacted me they said uh, asked me whether you can help me out on this so i tried to figure out uh, what was the real uh, uh, what was the real uh, uh, real thing which is actually causing the spike so what i did i tried to google up and uh, see what is the different options we have so there is something called if you go to s3 we have something called uh, so if you have a bucket so these are the various s3 bucket so you have the bucket and you can actually uh, enable uh, analytics on that you have something called uh, server access logging you can uh, by default this is switched off so you need to actually enable this so once you start enable this uh, server access logging you can actually is a aws s3 starts logging each and every request that is made to the s3 so you can actually the logs are uh, kind of stored here so it creates a directory called logs and uh, for each request it actually creates one simple simple text file one one text file for each request and it will store the ip address and uh, uh, what is the time and uh, how much data was uh, all the different parameters of the uh, request but this actually doesn't make sense to anyone it's a very flat file no, nobody can actually figure out the uh, make meaningful sense of this data so what we uh, what i tried to do was i tried to figure out probably maybe i can write a some kind of a small server script which actually can parse all this but then that also didn't figure help me out so i thought maybe maybe there might be some th third party providers who can help me out uh, uh, with uh, understanding what this all these logs so i googled up there are many third party small startups which are actually specifically meant to enable you to access pass this access logs and understand what what's exactly happening so one of the things the one of the uh, tools that i used was uh, it's called s3 stat so aws is actually enabling some of the different markets they don't they are not providing one service because of that there is a startup called s3 stat which is just providing only analytics for that so you just sign up here once you sign up uh, you actually can uh, you need to actually uh, sign up and you have to give access to your s3 database read write access to your s3 database so what basically these guys do is they go and fetch all those logs that s3 s3 is uh, generating and then they generate give give you this nice beautiful report so this is actually much better than understand seeing all those log files so here i can actually see if you see this log there's only this four uh, four or five files which are actually ca causing all those uh, data transfer this is a very one, one file which is accessed almost uh, 200 uh, thousand times and it's almost uh, uh, close to 900 uh, 900 gb so almost close to 1 terabyte and that's costing 87 dollars so close to only five files are the one which is actually causing all this uh, spike in billing 
So, this with this you can actually now you know uh, who is this uh, real culprit which is a file which is actually uh, to be blamed. Now, now that you know which is the file which is causing now from here on it is up to you how do you want to optimize. So, one of the op we had two options. So, these were uh, high definition videos. So, if you either you can uh, reduce the video the definition uh, compress, compress it maybe instead of a high definition maybe you can go for the 720p or what I did was since these were help files they were not of uh, much uh, importance I just moved all those files to YouTube. And then I gave access uh, I linked those YouTube videos here in the app. So, instead of actually going through S3 I am actually pulling it from YouTube. So, this uh, very simple <laughs> now we YouTube will be built for all those <laughs> everything. So, it is very simple solution. Now, the, uh, the owner of the company is uh, saved almost uh, close to 300 to 400 dollars every month because of one simple change just moving from uh, S3 to but this is not a practical solution I mean it all depends on the use case basis in this particular use case it was uh, very relevant I, I, I could afford to do this. But maybe if you have really a paid content that so based on your use case at least you know you have you have data to take decisions if you have the data you can actually take decision if it really uh, not um, not possible I mean if those re videos are really paid content. Uh, that you cannot put it in a public access then you cannot uh, you cannot do anything that then you have to pay for that. So, in my case it was a really simple solution at least I could I found out this 5 culprits put it on YouTube and uh, YouTube was paying for the 400 dollars <laughs> whatever. So, with this uh, we come to know that uh, like how do we optimize uh, S3 analytics. So, what I mean to say that you should always have analytics uh, enabled especially uh, deployed a update to one of our software on the S3 and there was some error which made that uh, S3 usage into petabytes and Amazon made a very big uh, money out of that. <laughs> so, maybe if you do a mistake you can, it can ruin your business. So, S3 Amazon services are really good, but you need to know what, what exactly you are. You need to have data at your uh, fingertips to take decisions. So, if you have data you have can take decisions and you can optimize your business according to that. So, with that uh, I think I end my talk. Any questions? Anish, why was it cloud front um, considered to reduce the uh, CloudFront basically this is a small startup so if we do not want to use uh, too many of the services then it uh, adds to the development cost who knows all those things. So, they were using S3 already so they just wanted to dump it there and this is just 4 or 5 uh, new additional uh, help videos they could have that that. Maybe for a larger organization it actually makes sense ok you can hire a bunch of engineers one for cloud, uh, cloud front, other for S3, other for uh, RDS and whatever. Yeah, this is a very you can see the billing. It's a 200 to 300 dollars. So it's not a big startup. They are making small, uh, quite small, uh, quite decent amount of money. But yeah, we have to be aware of all the cost and all those things. Okay, how about using reduced redundancy? Reduced redundancy, like how? Okay, so S3 has three storage. Yeah. Sorry, S3 has for the better the room. S3 has uh, three or three storage, uh, right? Your standard, hmm. and then you have infrequent access, hmm. and very short, hmm. very short. Hmm. but in between infrequent access and your standard, okay. Amazon can reduce what we call um, reduced redundancy. Okay. So you're losing one or two nines out of the availability of the 11 nines. Hmm. So availability is still there, but the cost is almost half, almost near price of. Yeah. Yeah, that, that actually there is also one of the option here in the two we are actually using using US East North Virginia region only that I am not even using uh, the global one I am just using one region even with that uh, the cost was too high I mean that difference of 400 dollars actually may makes a big difference for a, a small startup. All right, right. I, yeah. Sorry I, I correct myself because you were talking about transfer costs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
Any more questions? Yeah, if uh, the practical solution would be probably you'll have to compress your video or enable HTML5 caching and HTML5 with the latest HTML5 there's an also an option that you can actually store that video locally on the uh, user's uh, machine so that if once it is downloaded the second time it doesn't go have to go to the S3 server it has to directly take it from the uh, user machine. And additionally you can enable the uh, cloud, fr uh, cloud front. So what it does, this uh, video is static contents. So once the cloud formation cache hit, it's always there. So we every time, yeah. Internal organization compliance training. Yes. So it's from cloud 50 people external going to internet, then go to the cloud front. And then it goes to the in-house video with the house data. But route, that is how it goes. route 53 can also directly route to the cloud formation, uh, cloud front. Yeah. So one, one option we had was uh, using HTML5 had a very good uh, caching option wherein you can actually download that video to the uh, uh, browser cache and keep it there alive and for a long time. Can I ask, answer that question? Yeah. You can configure a street bucket as a private bucket but have cloud pull from that one. So you're only exposing the cloud endpoint, yeah. um, not the street endpoint. And that will save your password cost as well. Because then the object will be password to the edge locations, then your user yeah, just pulls it from the not pulling it from your pocket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's just an option, just to take it and uh, it starts logging. Again, the, the cost would be like if your uh, logs keeps accumulating, then your uh, data storage space will be accumulated. Maybe that will be built, but that will be very less. It will be like hardly less than a dollar. Good. Okay. Thank you.